Hello you lucky lucky people, it's that time again where I talk about a magazine that you've probably already got and read cover to cover many many times but if you haven't you might find this interesting. Uh, I certainly like going through these magazines just because there's sometimes there's little things that you may have missed so it's nice to uh, bring them back to the uh, to the attention of people who maybe didn't see it the first time around. Okay this is Dreamcast magazine Issue number eight, it was released on the 20th of April, 2000, so only 16 years old. Uh, it's just kind of occurred to me that there's probably people maybe watching this video who were born after 2000, so this is actually older than them. However, uh, it's, it's quite a sobering thought, really, when you think about it like that. Um, yeah, so this is Dreamcast Magazine issue number eight. Uh, it's the second time, actually, that Better Alive has been featured on the cover. I think it, well, I can't remember off the top of my head which issue it was, but there was one with the purple front on it, which had the Dead or Alive 2 uh, girls on the front. So, yeah, they're quite a, a fan favourite with the uh, old Dreamcast magazine editorial staff, quite clearly. Uh, the reason this time round is because it's actually reviewed in this in this issue. As well as that, we've got Echo the Dolphin, we've got Four Wheel Thunder, great game, and Tech Romancer. And an interesting feature about Urban Chaos, we'll come to that. So, let's go inside the magazine. First page is a uh, quite an interesting advert. It's for Resident Evil 2 on the Dreamcast. Um, you can't really tell that from the uh, the image, but it's uh, yeah, it's for Resident Evil 2. That okay. First page, we have as usual editorial from Simon Phillips, the editor. Some in in information on the features, and then we also have the contents page, as you would expect. I'm just going to bend that down a bit so it's not reflecting the light into the camera and here we go uh, newscast the first part of the magazine deals with upcoming games as you would expect here we have evil dead hail to the king uh, if you've not played it it's kind of like um it's, sl it's a bit like resident evil but not as good as you would unlikely uh, come to expect uh, interestingly these shots in the magazine are actually they're not shots from the actual game they're like mock-ups and the game doesn't look anywhere near, as, even though these look pretty shoddy, it doesn't look anywhere near as good as that, and it's not a very good game, to be totally honest with you. Uh, so, moving on, nothing to see here. This magazine does have quite a few little snippets about games that were never released, and I will point them out as we go through the, the news section. Um, first one is this, which is Test Drive Off-Road, confirmed for Dreamcast. These shots here, I'm not sure if they're from the Dreamcast version or the PC version, it did come come to the PC, but it never made an appearance on the Dreamcast, as far as I'm aware. No, in fact, I'm pretty I'm certain it didn't come out on the Dreamcast. I know Test Drive Six came out in the US only, but Test Drive Off Road never came to the Dreamcast. Um, interesting. This story down here on the le on the left hand side, uh, it's it's just like a little snippet section. Um, it's a, a really small story uh, about Konami pledging support for the Dreamcast. And it says here, at a recent press event, Konami announced that it's working on a totally original title for the Dreamcast, uh, presently called Imperial Hawk. I've never heard of Imperial Hawk before rereading this magazine. I'd never heard of that name. So if anybody knows anything about it, then please let me know in the comments. Uh, that's Imperial Hawk. Uh, over here, Castlevania Resurrection is confirmed as being cancelled. Weirdly, on the same page as Konami pledging support for the Dreamcast. Don't know what that's about. Uh, over here as well, we have a little story about. Uh, pe some people may remember that Pamela Anderson was in a, um, a, a TV series called VIP, and this is a story that a game would be being produced, and that it was going to be um, published by Ubisoft and released in November of 2000 for the Dreamcast. Again, that one never came, so um, that's another interesting little game that never was. Uh, also up here, there's a little snippet about uh, Roswell Conspiracies, which was based on the TV series, uh, the cartoon series. Again, that one never came. Although there are a lot of screenshots online that you can find if you just do a quick Google search for Roswell Conspiracies Dreamcast, you'll find cell shaded images of a game that did look quite promising. Okay, let's move on. Uh, not much on this one, just a little bit about uh, Somebody Amigo and Evolution, getting a sequel. That's Evolution Too Far of Promise. Advert there for Fur Fighters. Okay, more information here. Fantasy Star Online and 
just a snippet here about online gaming finally coming to Europe. Uh, online gaming wasn't a thing when the Dreamcast launched in, in Europe, um, even though it was one of the main selling points for the Dreamcast. There was a lot of issues trying to get the servers online and that kind of thing. So here it is, uh, 2G Rocket coming to the Dreamcast and you would finally be able to play online with your Dreamcast. Uh, here, this PC to DC section was about games that were planned for the Dream... Uh, sorry, were already on uh, PC and were planned to come over to the Dreamcast, potentially. Prince of Persia, we know, did come, and I even did a, an article on the Dreamcast Junkyard about the, the Dreamcast version of Prince of Persia. It's not a bad game, to be honest, if you can find it. Uh, this one here is interesting, Rune. I've actually played Rune on the PC. It's quite an interesting, quite a fun hack-and-slash third-person game, and, yeah, it would have been nice to see that on the Dreamcast, actually, uh, but, again, that never came. Moving on. Little uh, story here about El Dorado Gate, which was a, an episodic RPG from Capcom. And then another bit about an unreleased game here, which is Austin Powers Mojo Rally, uh, based on the obviously the, the Austin Powers film franchise, uh, taking characters from the different films and putting them together in a kind of cash-in cart game, really. Uh, no screenshots. Um, there aren't really many screenshots on the internet, to be honest, of the Dreamcast version. And there's just a kind of a, a little mock-up here of what a mini me would look like in the game. MDK2 advert there. Okay, uh, obviously in 2000 we had the Sydney Olympics, so there's a, a preview here of the Sydney Olympics game, which um, is it's okay. You know, it's not amazing. The graphics are very basic, but it's you know it's a decent athletics game if you like them kinds of things on the Dreamcast. I'm not a fan personally, uh, but there it is. Moving on, uh, Japanese and American news. Uh, another th uh, interesting story here, again, very small little snippet, is about Infogrames publishing Stunt GP in the US. Stunt GP never came out in the US, it's a PAL only game. And uh, yeah, apparently a deal had been struck with uh, Infogrames, they were going to publish it, but whatever happened there, I don't know, but it never came. Uh, sequel to Mac and X, rumoured here, again, didn't happen. And uh, yeah, uh, this is about the um, the MP3 player for the Dreamcast, the VMU MP3 player. Little story there. Okay, uh, move on. Okay, preview of Dragon's Blood. And uh, another preview here of a, a, an unreleased Dreamcast game, which was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This did actually come out on the Xbox, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's actually really good as well. And uh, these screenshots are reportedly from the Dreamcast version, and dubious as to whether they actually are. But uh, yeah, Buffy was originally planned to be a Dreamcast game. And again, we have more news about uh, Sega Worldwide Soccer Euro 2000 Edition, which is just an updated version of Sega Worldwide Soccer 2000. Slightly improved game, still not perfect, but it's better than the original one. And of course, Disney World Ra Magic Racing Tour. Uh, which is pretty shoddy. V Rally 2 Expert Edition preview. Uh, probably the best rally game on the Dreamcast. Uh, it's the only one, really, the only like more simmy game. Uh, I wouldn't really class Sega Rally 2 as a, as a. Well, it's not a sim, is it? It's a complete arcade game. And yeah, out of the two, I would more than likely go for V Rally just because it's got so much more replay value, really, and more variety in the tracks. But yeah, there's a nice uh, preview of V-Rally 2. Wacky Races, one of the more, more visually impressive games on the Dreamcast. Uh, cell shaded graphics. It's more of a kart racer than anything, but it's still pretty good fun and has lots of sound samples and all the characters from the uh, the TV series. Uh, great intro as well with um, voiceover from Greg Proops, you know, the guy who was on Whose Line Is It Anyway and did the voiceover work in um, well, Star Wars Episode One Racer, the two-headed commentator for the uh, oh, I can't remember what track it is, it's the desert track um, Akatera, The Dark Brotherhood another game that was unreleased for the Dreamcast, I don't even know, did it even come out on the PC? I can't remember, I do all these videos off the top of my head, I don't do any re really do any research, I just really focus on what's in the magazine um, but I'm, it was a PC game, I'm not sure if it came out but yeah, there's some screenshots there I'm, I'm guessing they're from the PC version it says here that it's 80% complete and if that's true, there should be at least some um, like beaters or something floating around the internet, but there's nothing so I'm dubious as to whether that is the Dreamcast version in the screenshots 
competition. There was a lot of competitions in Dreamcast magazine. There was, you know, on every other page, there's a competition. I, I've kind of just skipped over them just because they're quite normal for this magazine. But on this one, you can win a uh, quite a nice Philips stereo TV there, Nikon stereo TV that floats your boat. <laughs> Uh, Kiss Cycle Circus, Nightmare Child. The less I said about that, the better, I think. Rush 2049, one of my favourite games on the Dreamcast. Really, really good fun and looks amazing too, especially on the CRT VJ monitor. Big advert here again for gameplay. They seem to fund uh, Dreamcast magazine almost single handedly, uh, this, this particular seller. Gauntlet Legends. Another one that kind of is okay, but not amazing. Not very really keen on the uh, on the character models. Look at the state of that. I mean, that must like muscle textures are just ridiculous. Uh, Ultimate Fighting Championship, another great game if you can kind of get your head around it. There's a. I remember first playing Ultimate Fighting Championship or UFC and not really liking it. But then once you kind of appreciate that it's meant to be realistic and, you know, you, you, you know, there's a lot of like groundwork and the, the, the fights can last literally like 10 seconds, like your real UFC bouts, um, it, you know, you get a lot more uh, appreciation for it as a uh, as a, an actual simulation of the sport rather than a, just a game. I know the UFC games on the current gen systems are very popular and this was really the first time that it had been done in, you know, to this effect. Great visuals as well. So, uh, worth checking out if you've not played it, but this is just a preview at this point. Okay, Urban Chaos. Um, for some reason, they felt that it was worth devoting, you know, a big feature to this to this game. It's actually one of the worst games on the Dreamcast, and here it's a, a PC to DC special. So we're, we're, we're mainly focused on the fact that it was a, a game that was on the PC first and it was ported. So it wasn't the PlayStation version that was ported; it was the PC version, according to this. Um, yeah, it's a terrible game. If you've never played it, just think. Um, it's like an open world cop simulator, but not actually very good. Very, very bad graphics, horrendous controls, poor collision detection, just utter rubbish. But you know, if you see it cheap, it might be worth picking up just to see how bad games from that era truly could be. So, yeah, there was a lot of build up for the game. I'm sure they weren't to know how bad it would be back then. Virtual Cop 2, this is looking at the arcade version because further on in the magazine, as we'll see, it was re uh, released on the Dreamcast and reviewed in this episode episode issue. So just talking to people in a, in a local arcade. Apparently the local arcade down in Bournemouth, where this magazine was actually um, made. Okay, moving on. We get to the review section. First one. Cover story, Dead or Alive 2, great game, looks fantastic, plays well, uh, does not really got a lot of longevity as far as I'm concerned, you know, you can button bash and win quite easily most most of the fights. Uh, yeah, 91%, again, pretty decent game, looks amazing still. Moving on, Echo the Dolphin, not a game I've put a lot of time into, but I believe from talking to various people who are quite into this game, that it does get very good the further you get into it. So I, I really need to put some more time and effort into it, but rightly so, it gets 91% in this uh, in this magazine, the review. Next up, we have Four Wheel Thunder, which is a continuation of the Thunder series from Midway. Uh, it was also meant to include Arctic Thunder, if I'm not mistaken, but that one never came out. Um, but yeah, uh, Four Wheel Thunder is a four wheel drive game in the same style mold as Hydro Thunder, so you've got turbo boosts, you know, loads of shortcuts. Um, it's very difficult, I will say. Looks amazing though, and it got 92% in this magazine. So, moving on, Tech Romancer, a fighting game from Capcom where you just fight in massive robots. Really good fun. Doesn't take itself too seriously and uh, has a similar graphical style to. Um, rival schools, you know, Project Justice, like kind of not massively detailed character models, but like really bright and big and brash. So yeah, it's worth a, worth a 90%, I would agree with that. 
Next up, the Nomad Soul, which I showed in the last video, uh, like they had a big preview because of obviously the David Bowie connection. And in this magazine, it gets 84%. And yeah, it's a decent adventure. One thing I always remember about Nomad Soul, though, and I went back to it a few weeks ago just to have a quick go on it, is the text is really small on the screen. So it's really hard to read what all the little menus and things and the, the in-game like story-driven text is saying because it's so small. The text is so small. It's minor gripe, but you know, when you need to read stuff, <laughs> it can be a bit of a hindrance. So yeah, that got uh, 84%. Little box there about Bowie's you know, you know, involvement with the game. Street Fighter 3 Double Impact, uh, 74%. I'm not a massive fan of 2D fighters. I do enjoy them, but I couldn't say why it got, you know. If you showed me Street Fighter 3 and all the other different Street Fighters and said, which is your favourite? I'd be like, oh, I don't know, they're all the same, aren't they? Probably going to get roasted for that, but just my opinion. So yeah, 74%. Uh, ECW Hardcore Revolution, terrible game, which just basically milks the WWF Attitude Engine, when I can speak properly. Uh, 48%. Wetrix. I first played this on N64, I quite enjoyed it, and this is really just a continuation of the Wetrix uh, franchise, but on the Dreamcast, uh, it's not uh, it's just a puzzle game where you have to build like walls and put as much water as you can into each one, so if it all runs off, then it's game over. It's quite an interesting concept, a nice uh, original take on the puzzle genre. Uh, worth picking up if you see it, cheap, um, yeah, 80%. Marvel vs. Capcom 2, 92%. I don't really say much about Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Everyone's played it. It's brilliant. And then we move on to the import reviews. I'm, I'm aware, again, that you probably can't see what this says because of the way the camera is away from the magazine. But we've got Virtual Cop 2 here. That's 69%. Ring, which I looked at recently on the Dreamcast Junkyard. That's 59%. Uh, Aero Dancing F. I got 82%, which basically it's Aero Wings with weapons. And I'm not sure if Aero Dancing F is what we got in the West as Aero Wings 2. So, it, I mean, it could be. I need to look into that more. Um, Sakura Wars, 77%. Not something I've ever like, delved into or played, so I can't really comment on that. And NHL 2K got 84%. Uh, I do like NHL games. NHL 2K was fantastic at the time. It was easily the best-looking ice hockey game of all time when it came out. And uh, yeah, this uh, gets 84%. Um, I think NHL 2K is slightly better. It's odd that they never released an NHL 2K1 when all the other uh, sports games, or the 2K games, got a 2K1. So you got NBA 2K1, NFL 2K1, um, even MLB 2K1, which is baseball. Uh, but NHL 2K, there was only the two. There was NHL 2K and NHL 2K2. Incidentally, NHL 2K2, I believe, was the last official um, American release on the Dreamcast. So there you go, fact fans. Okay, the interact section is where, you know, readers got to speak with the, uh, the editorial staff. So we've got the letters page here. Uh, tips and reader reviews. Reader reviews, we've got two crazy taxi reviews in this one. We've got one that gives it 94% and one that gives it 95%. Uh, there's a Speed Devils review, 86, and a Virtual Striker 2, 85%. Uh, top 10 Dreamcast beat em ups. At number 10, we've got Psychic Force 2012. Uh, number 9, WWF Attitude, for some reason. Uh, number 8, Journal of Dread Adventure. 7, Mortal Kombat Gold. 6, Virtual Fighter 3 TB. 5, Marvel vs. Capcom. 4, Street Fighter Alpha 3. 3, Power Stone. 2, Ready to Rumble. And number 1, it's got to be uh, Soul Calibur. Okay, uh, this is the online section where they would give you a guide to the best websites. Uh, this one's all about shopping online. There's a nice do's and don'ts of online shopping there. You have to remember that when this magazine came out, online shopping was a really new thing. You know, I don't even think eBay existed back then. So um, yeah, these, this was quite a, a common thing to see in magazines. There was a magazine at the time called, I think it was, oh, what was it called? Was it .net or something? And yeah, they had loads of guides like this, and it was just a magazine completely made up of guides on what to do on the internet, as if you'd need that these days. It's uh, interesting to think back at, you know, how, not naive, but how things have changed. Uh, 
Uh, Dreamcast Solutions, just various cheats for different games, Dynamite Cop, Worms Armageddon, I won't dwell too long on this. Uh, a guide for Tomb Raider The Last Revelation, skip past all this. Yeah, there you go, look, here's an advert for Shop at Home, a magazine basically just for shopping online. And here we have the, the guide or the directory where it just gives a very brief overview of all the different games that they've reviewed for over the past seven or eight issues. Wild Wild West DVD review over there and the Blair Witch Project. I missed the page note. Uh, what else have we got on here? Anything interesting? Buffy the Vampire Slayer um, comic and the best games in each genre. I do like this section, it, it's, it's quite telling, you know, the technology of the time is, it's all new, but when we look back on it, it's quite antiquated really, obviously being 16 years old, but still quite fun nonetheless. This is quite interesting, down here we've got a thing called virtual, virtual reality boxing, or VR Ninja, so you put this headset on, and you've got these gloves and things, and it would connect to the TV, so that's uh, interesting. Uh, it says here, um, graphically it's somewhat reminiscent of 80s arcades but it is only a bit of a laugh after all. Try telling that to uh, Oculus or <laughs> PlayStation VR, but it's only just a laugh. 3.3 uh, .3 megapixel camera over there. And then this thing here called The Stone, which was quite a big thing at the time. It was a, an online game, like a mystery game, quite similar to that. What's that thing at the moment? It's called, is it Sisida or Sisada or something, where it's like a a bizarre, mysterious, like, online treasure hunt where you, at the end of it you get inducted into this weird cult or something. Um, but yeah, the stone is quite similar. So it might be worth, well, I don't, it's probably been solved by now, but it was a, an online game where you were able to, you know, solve puzzles and things. Uh, yeah, so just a little bit of antiquated tech there for you. Dial a game. If you're too lazy to get up off your couch and go and buy a game, dial a game, ring the number and it gets delivered to your house. Brilliant. Advert. Next issue, world exclusive, Half-Life. And then on the bottom here, we've got different games that would be featured. So you've got V-Ride 2 again, Sony Hawk's Pro Skater, Choo Choo Rocket, Power Stone 2, Wacky Races, and Resident Evil Code Veronica. That was on sale on the 18th of May 2000. It was a glorious day. I remember it well. Uh, back issues. And then on the last page you've got a dream moment, which is a uh, crazy taxi flying through the uh, the air over the uh, the hills of uh, whichever the city it is in crazy taxi. I think it's meant to be San Francisco, isn't it? Something with all the hills and the trams and things. Having never been to San Francisco, I'm not entirely sure if that's true. I might be talking complete rubbish, and I'm sorry if I am. Anyway, that is Dreamcast Magazine. Oh, and there you go on the back, you've got Nomad Soul. Dreamcast Magazine, issue number eight from April 2000. And yeah, I hope you uh, have enjoyed watching me leaf through this fascinating magazine. So it's a history lesson. History lesson. Right, I'm off now. Cheers.